Here we are. Here we are, Sainers. It's happened. It's the last game of 2022. Or is it? As Ratten said, 176 point turnaround and a couple of results go our way and who knows what could happen. So, um, nah, it's not, it's not how we're gonna be treating this game. Uh, welcome to the round 23 preview. We take on the Sydney Swans Sunday graveyard, graveyard slot, 4.40 p.m. The last game, officially the last game of the home and away season. Uh, at least for us, Sydney, they've got bigger fish to fry. They're absolutely flying. I think they're second on the ladder at the moment. And they know that if they win, that's top four. That's probably top two locked up. And uh, a very good start to, to finals for them. So they're just in absolutely scintillating form and they're our opponent. It's going to be very difficult. We are going to be without Cooper Sharman um, and Mason Wood, who I believe uh, suffered some injuries at training during the week. So they're going to be out, but we've got a host of players who are coming back in, including Josh Battle. Um, Dan Hanabry, notably, is playing his last game of AFL football. He's 226th and last, I believe and against his old club, which is fitting. Um, you know, much maligned figure at the club, hasn't played that much football on big money. And um, yeah, I think it's been just a crazy week for the club, to be honest. You know, we've got a review happening that we'll delve into um, in, in other videos in the next couple of weeks, obviously, and see what happens there. And then you've got Brad Hill potentially leaving, could even go to North Melbourne, where Alistair Clarkson is now coach, another big piece of news. Um, and obviously, you know, the likelihood of Paddy Ryder potentially retiring and then obviously the news of Dan Hanabry. So there's just so much going on. Um, and, every, you know, this game, the Sunday game is kind of taking a back seat. We're not really talking about it. We're talking about all the other news. And hopefully they're not a big distraction for the boys this week because, you know, we, we probably we're not going to make finals. And um, we've been in pretty much average form since the bye. Three wins and seven losses, I think, or three wins and eight losses. And... The least they could do is just, yeah, put in a performance on Sunday, whether we win or not, and give the fans something to cheer about. But I, I don't know, I kind of feel like this is the game where we'll probably win because that's what we do when the pressure's off. We win games and we play well. But this time, it's not going to really help us because we were 8-3 and three and this was the year to make finals, not a building year. Last year... We finished the season well. We smashed Fremantle. We saw Bytel come in and play really well. We saw Sharman kick four. And we're like, great. There's plenty there to enjoy. We didn't make finals in 2021, but we got that game. We felt a bit better about it. Off-season was good. And then the rest was history. This year, we, we started the year on fire, eight and three. Um, we really expected to play finals, you know, compete pretty hard for that flag. And all things were looking good. And then... Second half of the season happens, tougher draw, injuries, bad form, just overall mismanagement from the club as a whole, and we find ourselves in a review after signing on Ratten for two years, and you know, coaches are, coaching changes are going to happen, Lenny Hayes as well, so there's a lot outside of this game that's taking place, but in terms of the game itself, it's really easy to kind of narrow down where we need to compete in this game. First of all, stopping... Uh, Isaac Heaney and Buddy Franklin and then second of all not bombing it to the McCartan boys who are all, you know just Paddy potentially all Australian that's how good he's going um, and feeding it down their throats and not maximizing our forward entries when we get them their midfield is very good at bats deep it's very young obviously uh, Jay Kennedy is finishing up for them or he, he has finished up he's not playing um, so a bit sad that him and Hannes couldn't finish off their careers together, but nonetheless, they've got a very, very good midfield. Um, they don't rely on one player. They've obviously got Warner, who's, um, who's a gun. They've got so many players across the park that can cause us problems. When you look at it, you know, you've got uh, Lloyd, who causes us problems most of the time. Warner, Heaney, um, Papley, Franklin, and then you've got Blakey, who's great at, you know, just running off halfback. Hickey, who's been a gun for them since... Uh, they got him, so they can thank us for that. And, and I think West Coast, he went to West Coast as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, Gould, Wicks, McLean, they've got just so much good depth and so much just youth, good youth that's coming through that makes 
I guess most Saints fans pretty jealous because Sydney just don't seem to bottom out. They always have good players, like A graders, and then they always have the the youngsters in behind, just just breeding youngsters constantly. And um, that's the one aspect of St Kilda that I guess we want to get to is having that that good portion of youngsters coming through. And for us, the youngsters in this game that are going to obviously be the players that we want to watch are Owens, Winhager, Nasaya, Sharman. Bartel hopefully gets a good game and comes in. Um, the other in so far, Tom Campbell, Dean Kent, Ryan Burns, Dara Joyce. You'd imagine, obviously, it's an extended bench and the final team will come out later tonight. But a lot of those players are going to be playing for contracts. You know, Ryan Burns, I thought was going to have a big year this year. Didn't happen. Tom Campbell, killing it at VFL level, just doesn't get picked. Uh, same with Dara Joyce at fullback, questionable. Dean Kent, um, obviously Dan Hanabry retiring. Josh Battles re-signed, but the bulk of these players... Um, haven't re-signed or haven't been offered contracts. And then you've got Brad Crouch on top of the two injuries that he's got a one-week suspension um, for his hit last week on, I think it was Gardner against Brisbane. Good chance for Bytel to come in, play that position. It'd be great to see Bytel and Winhager together in the middle, even Owens as well with Rowan the Ruck, just to see what happens with those three youngsters because we've never really done it. We haven't been in a position where we can play three you know, pretty good youngsters. Like, they all have really good potential. Put them in against, you know, a really strong Sydney outfit and see what happens. I don't think we'll get batted. I think, um, you know, Sydney have been flying. I think they've won six in a row, the way their form is. Um, they're only, you know, 60 points they're on. So they've, their form's been, yeah, six games in a row, which is uh, only betted by Geelong, who have won 12 Um so for us, it's just about being competitive. I want us to take the game on. Like, now we've got nothing to lose. We seem to just play that way when there is nothing to lose. And you just watch. We'll go through the guts. We'll play exciting football. It'll be expansive. We'll probably allow Sydney to kick a big score, but we'll probably kick a big score as well. It'll be a shootout. Um, Sydney will obviously want to, to beat us by a fair bit and just to continue their form going into finals. They wouldn't want to lose, you know, a week before finals begins because... Winning form is the best form going into finals, and you just imagine in the form that they're in, they're very confident. They've beaten up on a lot of teams lately, winning by a lot, kicking a lot of goals from a lot of goal sources. Our defense is going to have its work cut out. You basically get the vibe from me in this video that it's going to be a very, very tough ask for us to beat Sydney the way they're going, but you just wonder, maybe they'll get a bit complacent, maybe we'll just play with all guns blazing. And it could just be one of those games where we win and we just feel like at the end of the game, why didn't we do this for the rest of the second half of the year? But that's the sort of situation that we're in is we don't know what to expect from this team. We don't know if they can handle the heat. We don't know if they're going to play fast or slow. We just don't know. Even with positions, sometimes we just don't know where players are going to play with the Shaman plays forward or back and um, that sort of thing. So I think this offseason is huge for us. Obviously, this game... It's kind of irrelevant for our season now. We might finish as low as 10th. So draft pick-wise, it might be good. I don't know. Um, and if we win, probably still finish 9th and percentage out of the A, which would be really shit. Um, that'll take us to 12 wins, I think, and 10 losses, whereas last year we were potentially 10 and 12, I think. So a couple of wins extra from last year. But again, it's, it's a bit of a failed season for us. We really wanted to deliver and... Um, Considering the way we started the year, it would have been good to play finals, but at least we're ending the year playing a, um, a top team in top form, and that really does give us some more um, notes of learning. You know, we've played Geelong and Brisbane in the last two, and then to finish with Sydney the way they're going, I think it's a great end to the season to really identify our flaws and, and matchups against the top teams and see where we really need to improve. I think a lot of us already know where we need to improve. We need another gun mid. We need a better forward structure, we need better connection between mids and forwards, and I think maybe another tall backman, but overall our back line's actually been very, very good this year, and I wouldn't say they're the reason we're missing out on finals. I think there are other reasons outside of that. I think they've been the best performed section of the ground, um, and they're going to have to prove it again on the weekend against a very, very formidable Sydney forward line. Papley, you'd think Patton or, um, I think Jimmy Webster's out, so you'd think maybe Patton goes to Papley. Franklin's a nightmare for whoever goes to him. I think Wilkie's had history on him previously and done a good job. So you think Cal Wilkie and then Dougal Howard can take someone like a Sam Reed or 
McDonald or someone like that. So it's going to be a tough one saying as I'm going obviously with the Swans uh, mate. So that'll be interesting watching. But I really do hope that a lot of Sainers do get to the ground and support the boys. I know that we're all really frustrated with the way the club's going at the moment, particularly off-field, the way it's being run. Um, so I think the reviews come at a, you know, we, we should have done this years ago and now finally we're, we're looking to do it in, in the way that we all want it done, an external, serious, in-depth review. Um, and then obviously coaching changes will happen. Lenny Hayes could be announced as early as next week. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes and obviously not to mention trade season and players coming in and going out and then the draft. So there's going to be a lot of changes to the club, but I just hope that we can all back the boys in on Sunday, despite the fact that we're not playing finals, just to get to the ground. It's the last time before, you know, six month break that we get to watch the boys live. So I think, yeah, a Sunday 440, if you can get to Marvel, let's try and get 30,000. We couldn't even get 30 last week on a Friday night against Brisbane. I think the boys really do thrive on, on a crowd atmosphere and getting the crowd behind the boys. So um, let's just park the frustrations and just go to the footy and not expect anything, but just cheer, good mark, good kick, good goal, and just have a good you know, Sunday out with the family and friends. So I'll leave it there saying as, um, you know, not the not the final preview that I wanted for the year. I wanted to really be um, talking up the next couple of weeks in finals and preparing for that, but that's just the way it is as a Saints fan. And um, hopefully this can really be the off-season that actual change can happen because we're all really fed up and it's tiring to see other teams challenge for the flag and even just make finals and the excitement of making finals. Even if you get knocked out in the first week, just to make it is exciting. So... Um, I really do miss that from 2020 and even going to a final would be amazing. So hopefully in the, the off season, we can sort our shit out and have a big 2023. So I'll leave it there saying is thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe as well. We've hit 4,000, but the next target is 5,000 obviously. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. That'd be amazing. Um, and I'll be back after the game on Sunday night, for the full review of our final game of the season against the Sydney Swans. But until then, Santa's, take care of yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and Saturday, and I'll see you after the game on Sunday. Take care, Santa's, and go you mighty Santa's. See you guys.